Spawn Camp here. Today we're going to make a UI for our Doom clone and write a script to tie it all together. So on our project, the first thing we're going to do is go to the hierarchy and we're going to create a new UI canvas and we'll name it Player UI for now. We can go into our 2D mode while we lay this out. But before we go any farther, let's make the scale mode scale with screen size and put in your reference resolution. Mine is 1920 by 1080. And inside we'll create a new UI image to start off and let's name it background so let's go back to our sprites folder of our project and I create a new folder for my UI called UI and I'm ready to drag in my sprites I have a background and four face sprites of the original doom guy so once they're all in here we can select them and change our texture type to 2d UI and hit apply and on the background that we just created, let's go ahead and drag in our sprite in the source image and untick Raycast Target. So now we can fix the position and size of this thing by using the anchor presets here at the top. I'm going to hold Shift and Alt to change this anchor and position at the same time and I'm going to click this icon and it's going to stretch it across the bottom and anchor it at the bottom. To fix the height, we're going to take a peek at the background image and we'll see here there's 224 pixels. So we can go back to the background inspectors and change the height manually to 224. I think this is a bit too bright, so let's just change the color a little bit. Good, good. So let's create another UI image in our player canvas, and this will be called the health indicator. In the anchors, I'll again use shift and alt, but this time I'm going to anchor it without stretching. And I'm going to zoom in, and we're going to adjust the size and then the position. We're going to set the color to black for now. So now we're going to create an empty and this is going to be called key indicator. We're going to hold shift and alt and we're going to anchor this to the bottom right corner and then we're going to take our move tool and move it to the center of where we want our keys. So now as a child of the key indicator we'll create a new image and we're gonna call this blue. We're gonna move it up to about the top position here and then we'll resize it to something that looks right. And for the source image of this image we're gonna use the same sprite that we used for the key pickups. So let's go find those in our project and drag it in. Then we want to uncheck Raycast Target, and before I forget, let's go and do the same thing to our Health Indicator. And then we can make the other two keys the same way. We'll make a green key, and then we'll make a red key. And once we got all the keys made, we can go ahead and select them all. And disable them all. So now that our images are set up, let's go ahead and work on our text. And we'll also be using a custom font. I'm going to create a new folder for our font called font. And I'm going to drag in this .ttf file that I downloaded for free. The link's in the description. Now we need to go up to Windows and go to our Text Mesh Pro. Click the font asset creator. So if this is the first time with Text Mesh Pro in your project, you'll need to import the essentials. Then we'll need to select our font for our source font file. And then we're going to click Generate Font Atlas. And then after that, we'll hit Save. We'll make sure that this is in our font folder. And we're ready to use it. So in our UI, we'll create a new UI. Text, Text Mesh Pro. And name it Ammo. We'll be working left to right. So first off, we'll hold Shift and Alt. And we'll select the bottom left from our Anchor Preset tool. and move it into position. In the inspector, we select our new font for the font asset and use our rec tool to resize this a bit. Next, I'll change the text to 100 and I'll mess with the size. 72 seems good and I'll be aligning it to the right side. And 
and line this up to the center. And then I'll mess with the color a bit to get it to fit with the UI better. Now we need health, so let's just duplicate our ammo and name it health. The rest are going to be percentages, so to get our text centered, let's go ahead and add a percent to the end. We'll then align this in our health section of the UI. And then we'll duplicate the health and use it for our armor. And now, since this is closer to the right side of our screen, we'll use the anchor presets and while holding shift and alt, we'll align this to the bottom right. Now we can align this in the armor section of our UI. I'm just going to check one of the other texts that we just made and find out what the Y position is to make sure this is straight. And with our anchors correctly set, we'll see that if we go into play mode and mess around with our aspect ratio, that you'll see that our UI scales accordingly. Now we have a UI canvas and we also have our player who has these scripts. We could have each script change the value for each text element, but we'll use a UI manager instead. That will hold a reference to each of these text elements. Now we could have the UI manager check each script every frame, but it's better to only update our values when we need to. So instead, we'll have each script tell the UI manager when it's changed, and it will update the correct value for us. So with that in mind, I'll select my player UI canvas and add a new component. This will be a script called something like Canvas Manager, and we'll hit enter twice and double click it to open it in Visual Studio. To begin with, we only need the use in Unity engine statement and we'll add unityengine.ui and tm pro for our text mesh elements. Now we can get rid of everything inside the class and we'll start fresh. Let's get all our variables ready to use. We'll need a public text mesh pro ugui called health and two more for our armor and ammo. We'll need a reference to our health indicator where our little doom guy's face is going to be. So we'll use public image health indicator. And we'll need the sprites that we're going to use for it. So public sprite health one. Health two, health three, and health four. We'll start with health 1 being our full health. Lastly, we'll need our keys that we set up and disabled. We'll just use public game objects here and have one for red, blue, and green. Before we go into the logic, we'll save the script and go into Unity and we'll assign all these variables. So I'm going to just drag in our health, armor, and ammo text elements. And our health indicator is next. Next we'll expand out our key indicator and grab our keys and assign them. Finally we need our health sprites and these won't be in the project so instead we'll just drag our sprites that we imported earlier from our project window. So health 1 was our healthy doom guy, health 2 was our hurt doom guy, health 3 a little bit more hurt and 4 would be dead. And before we jump back into the script, and I forget, we need to select the health indicator and change the color back to white for our Doom Guy sprites to show properly. Now back in the script, we need some methods to update our values. First, we'll have a public void update health, and we'll pass in an integer called health value as the argument. Now we'll need two more of these for updating our armor and our ammo. And we'll call the ints here, armor value and ammo value. Now we need a function for updating our doom guy sprite. So we're going to say public void update health indicator. And this time with no arguments. And finally one last function called public void update keys. Now back in our update health, we'll set our health.text equals the health value we get and we need to convert it to a string with dot to string. 
then we'll plus percentage sign in quotations to tack it onto the end. And then if our health ever changes, we need to check our health sprites by calling the update health indicator function. Now we'll set our armor text the same way inside the update armor function. With the armor value. And then again for our ammo function, only this time we can get rid of the plus parentheses. So in our update health indicator function, I lied because we're going to need an argument. So up in the update health, we're going to pass the health value into this function. And back at the actual function, we'll grab this by adding int health value as an argument. We use if statements to change the sprite. And since there's only three sprites where the player is alive, we'll split 100 into thirds. So our first statement is if health value is greater than or equal to 66, then we set the health indicator dot sprite to equal our health one sprite. If health value is less than 66 and the health value is greater than or equal to 33 then we'll set it to be our health 2 sprite and if it's less than 33 and greater than 0 then it's our health 3 sprite and if somehow it's less than 0 well you're dead and our sprite should be health 4 Now we'll finish out the functions we need with the update keys and here I also decided to pass in something we can use. So as an argument we'll use a string called key color and inside the function it'll be pretty simple with if key color equals red then set our red key game object to be active with dot set active true. And we could do the exact same thing for the other keys. And here you'll see me adding an extra function called clear keys, which sets them all to false. And this would be used to reset the keys, say, at the start of a new level. Now this is basically the completed UI script. It'll do everything we need it to do, but we need a way to easily access it from our other scripts. And I don't want to need a reference for each script, so here I'm just gonna write out a basic singleton. We'll declare a private static canvas manager named underscore instance. And a public static one called capital instance with open bracket get open bracket return underscore instance and cl close off those brackets and we'll need an awake where we ask if underscore instance is not null and it's not this so we're saying if it exists and it isn't this one then we'll destroy this one else it does exist and it is this one so we'll set the underscore instance to equal this. Now we can save our script and go back into Unity to get the rest of our scripts to communicate with it. We'll navigate to the player and the first script that I'll edit is our player health script. We're gonna go up here and find our start function and we'll say canvas manager dot instance dot update health and we'll pass in our health. Now we can find where our player takes damage and at the very bottom of this function after all the logic is ran we'll say canvasmanager.instance.updatehealth again and we'll pass in our health. And I just realized in this function where we take damage we could also be taking damage to our armor so we also want to call canvasmanager.instance dot update armor and pass in our armor now at the very bottom of our give health function we're going to update our health 
And then at the very bottom of the give armor function, we're going to update our armor. Now we can save that script and back in Unity, we'll hop into our player inventory next. We'll create a start function because at the beginning of this script, we want to call the last function that we made in our canvas manager to clear the keys. And our key pickup is what actually modifies the script anyway, so we'll update our key UI in the actual key pickup. So save this script and it's finished. Next we'll update the ammo, and for this, it's pretty simple because we only have one gun for now. So we'll open our gun script. We'll find where we deduct the ammo and call the update ammo function and pass in the ammo. And we'll also need to update it when we're given ammo. So at the bottom of our give ammo function, we can save that and back in Unity, finally we'll update the keys by going and finding our key pickup script. So once it's open, we can use canvasmanager.instance.updateKeys and it's asking for our key color. So now we'll just use a string. So for red, we'll just use red. And if is blue key, we'll use the same method, but we'll pass in blue, and then we'll do green for green. Save that, and we can go back into Unity. I'm gonna collapse the UI because we're done with it, I think. And I'm gonna go out of 2D mode, and if I'm correct, we can just scatter around the prefabs and everything should work. Well, everything doesn't work. It appears our ammo is not updated when the game starts, so let's go up here, and in our start function of our gun script, we're gonna go ahead and call that ammo function in our canvas manager. So we can save that. The next thing I noticed was our armor wasn't getting updated, so we'll go into our player hell script, and also in the start function, here we're going to update our armor as well as our health. We can save that script. Then after those two mistakes are fixed, we can go and play test. And you'll see that everything's working. Our ammo, our armor, our key pickups. And with our hotkey, we can damage the player and see that our sprite is being updated accordingly. So with the UI out of the way, I look forward into getting into some more gameplay in the next few episodes. So that's all I got. Spawn Camp out.